Hello, good morning everybody. I'm just going to get started. So welcome and thanks for coming along and listening. Hope you had a pleasant evening last night. Uh, I know as you came yesterday, enjoyed the show yesterday. There's some pretty cool stuff going on. So I'm just going to take you through how Brompton started, our, started to connect our manufacturing assets and the, on the path to our digital transformation. The reason why I wanted to share this with manufacturers here is I want to share how we can just start just start simple, but more importantly, just get started. Because if we don't start as manufacturers, other people will, and they could end up beating us in competition, and also to improve our sustainability. So I'm gonna take you through our journey so far. First of all, just a little bit about Brompton. I've only got 20 minutes, so I'm not gonna take you through a full history of Brompton, but I'm just gonna take some of the manufacturing highlights. So we all began in 1975, in Kensington, where Andrew Ritchie began to invent the Brompton bike, overlooking the Brompton Oratory. And then in 1981, we started our small, small production in some railway arches um, in West London, and we've remained in West London ever since. So currently, uh, we're in the Greenford factory. We started manufacturing there in 2016. In 2020, we manufactured 50,000 bikes. That was including an electric variant. In 2022, this year, we're aiming at manufacturing 100,000 bikes. That's including electric variants and a full titanium one that's actually really cool and pretty light as well. So we're looking, looking forward to the future. So the, the site in Greenford is a grey, boring steel shed. And we're looking into the future now to build a manufacturing facility in Ashford, which is going to be a really cool circular glass building that's like manufacturing for the future. It's pretty exciting, actually. So we don't just create cool bikes. We create urban freedom for happier lives. So we give people access to, the, to parts of the city you might not see if you're just walking around or getting public transport. And we're putting sustainability at the heart of everything we do, looking at culture, planet, people, and activism. And part of that commitment, we're now going through our, our questions and our surveys and applying to become a B Corporation. So this is balancing planet, people, and profit. Uh, and it, it's, it's quite an exciting journey, and there's, yeah, there's lo lots of work to do. But we'll be, in a company's house, we will change our memorandum of business to be a certified B Corporation. So really specifically now about the Greenford factory. So brazing is a 6,000-year-old technology. So if anyone can see the bike, so the, the gold bits on there is the brazing. So that's the Aztecs were doing it to join jewellery together 6,000 years ago, and we're still doing it in Greenford. And we're combining that with, with modern technology. So we do have 3D printers, we do have robotics, we've got a cobot, and we do, we've got a semi-automated paint plant as well. But one of the things about our manufacturing facility is we've still got 350 employees hand assembling, hand brazing the bikes, and lots of the assets are not connected together, which is my problem. So the areas of focus I wanted to have a look at were sustainability and reliability. So we haven't had any submetering on the site, so I thought if we could get some information out of our mains meter, we can have a look at how, what kind of kilowatt hours we're consuming and it, on our way to become more sustainable. Our paint plant consumes the most water, the most electricity, and the most natural gas um, in our, on our site. So I wanted to get some monitor on there to see what the data could tell us to, so we can reduce our consumption. As I mentioned, we do a lot of brazing. There's a lot of hand brazing and automated brazing. So we wanted to have a look at our acetylene distribution system to make sure we're using that as effectively as possible, because acetylene production isn't great for the environment, to be honest, but, and that's something we were working on. So I wanted something to start simple and, and start with something that could give us tangible results. And so I wanted to have a look at performance and reliability. So there's two areas, being head of maintenance, that gives me a bit of a headache. So our paint chain is a slow moving chain. When I was having my interview process a couple of years ago, we had a problem with the chain and I ended up working some weekends to get it back up and running again and to make sure it didn't break down. And I don't want to go through that headache again. Any of those in maintenance knows it's a bit of a, a, bit of a night when you've got those assets at the back of your mind and think, oh, what's going to happen to it? But I knew that collecting the data would be able to give me some insight into it. We've also got a CNC machine that's really bespoke to us. So it manufactures the bottom bracket where the crank goes through on the bike, or the bike. And I want to make sure that we're getting the data from there to be able to predict 
uh, predict failures, and have a look at the reliability. So these two areas were, were relatively simple, but giving me a bit of a headache at the time, and I thought we could get some good information and insight into those. So how I approached this, so I came here about a year ago, um, I have a look around the stands and kind of right, like really super motivated and excited to see all the different solution providers around. And then I went over to the RS stand and we actually started talking about manufacturing, about problems, about what was going on in our factory. Not about a shiny data-driven dashboard, but about actual solutions and actual problems. So we were focused on the problem, focused on the factory, and um, not trying to solve a future problem that didn't exist. And I could quickly see that the depth of knowledge from the team um, within RS Industria could really benefit us because they, they understood automation, they understood reliability, they understood maintenance, they understood how factories work and some of the stresses and strains that would go under it within manufacturing. And also, I think most of us have heard of RS. We, we used to have the catalogue probably years ago and like thumbing through it before it was all um, data-driven. Data so they have got a huge back catalogue of parts to be able to supply us. So our thinking was, well, they would be able to give them a problem and they can solve it using their, their parts and components and access to their partners. And they also understand IoT and edge gateways and all the, the, the jargon that you can come across here. So I'll just talk about our first steps and kind of some of the things that we've discovered along the way by, by just getting started and getting stuck in. So every aspect of what we did, we learned from. There were, we, we made, not really we make mistakes, but we failed forward. We found some things that we didn't quite know at the time. One example is the energy meter. So that main coming energy meter, um, the manual was in German. Um, it wasn't, it, it, the manual was wrong. So we connected it all up, expected it to go into the, into the cloud and have the data just appear all of a sudden, but it wasn't working. So we contacted, well, wait, I didn't, uh, Carl contacted the manufacturer and asked what was going on. And he said, oh, yeah, we've got a problem with our manual, but we didn't think we needed to update it. So did the modifications and straight away had the data, literally straight away, the data going back into the cloud to see the work was done. So that was yeah, really cool. And our brazing gas. So we use a lot of acetylene. Well, we think it's a lot of acetylene. Um, and it's distributed throughout the factory to over 60 brazers and um, three automated machines. We use quite a low flow rate and a high pipe size. And what we found that we were going to have to start to break into the acetylene pipe work, have downtime, get specialists involved, and um, have some really bespoke flow, flow meters to be able to do it. And they, it was becoming complicated. So at that point, we're like, right, we're not starting simple. Let's just knock that on the head for the time being and focus on other areas of the factory. With our IKEA um, PLC, IKEA CNC machine, we've got a Siemens PLC. So we thought, okay, we've got that, we can just be able to get that up into the cloud, no problems. It wasn't quite as easy, that, because we didn't have the technical resource on, uh, within our team to be able to do that. So working with our rest and our automation team, um, they were able to quickly go, oh yes, we've done that before, you just need to click, click, click this. And we did it, on, we did it all online on Teams, and then we we're able to get the data updated. But what we didn't think about doing was also, this, the OEM had the CNC um, program had made some changes to it, and then they downloaded their program back again. So we lost all the changes again. So <laughs> we had to um, we had to go back, and we put a process in place now and some gatekeepers for looking after our PLC controls to make sure that it doesn't happen again. So taking that learning on board for the future, and one of the learnings was also about getting the IT team on board. So they were involved really early on, um, and they were up. They're absolute legends to be able to get things set up for us, to build our, our, local, our local network. I, I, I'm not quite sure what um, our, our IT team were talking about some of the times because they were going super technical, and that gave me the confidence that they knew what they were doing, and they were really able to help us. So I'm going to talk about project management because di digital transformation and connectivity is a continuous improvement tool. It's change management, and you have to have de decent program managers. So my project manager in Brompton, so he's, he's installed a cafe for me, he's done fit outs, he's done some asset installation, a little bit of infrastructure. He, he's not come across digital transformation before. I, I don't think we even called it digital transformation at the time. We were just saying we want to get our assets connected. So the, he worked with the, um, the project management team within RS as well. So those, those two um, people were able to get the expertise when we needed it and pull the people together. 
So our project manager in Brompton pulling together manufacturing engineering, maintenance engineering, the IT team production, pulling those together when we needed them. And likewise from the Brompton, so from the RS industrial project manager, um, Sophia was absolutely fantastic at keeping us, keeping us to task, keeping the cadence going uh, with weekly catch-ups, using really good pro project management techniques to keep us on track. And it was, we were able to really see results really early on. And the continued support has been, been great as well. So the, the team have been really supportive. So I'm just going to talk about some of the results. Um, this is a... Um, from our energy meter, I was thinking that we'd be able to have a look at some kilowatt hour re readings, have a look at what the peaks and troughs in demand. But what we found when we were looking at the data was these really high spikes in um, incoming voltage supply. So uh, trying to kind of a really simple analogy, we've got a big bucket of electricity trying to be pushed onto our site and it's kind of overflow when we get there. Most of our site is looking at like 220 Volt, uh, volt loads, and just using simple Ohm's law and working with PowerStar, who are here at um, Stand I24, uh, we've identified about 90, so about 80,000 kilowatt hours a year in savings from voltage optimization, which is really exciting. Uh, within the paint plant as well, so we were looking at the motor current, we're looking at vibration analysis on the motor, and we've identified that the, there's a really high startup current when the when the paint chain started every morning. So uh, the maintenance team have used that data to change the lubrication system, change the interval, and change the application method so that we can see um, the, the current load coming down on the paint plant. And it, really cool, I thought, but that you could see it in real time, actually, when the lubrication's, we, when the lubrication's applied, you can see the current coming down, which I thought was quite cool. And early results on the CNC. So this graph shows the torque values of the, the spindle um, cutting tools for um, this the, it's for this bit here. So it, put, it cuts a thread into there. And these are the torque characteristics. And what you can see on here is there's a, a gradual increase of torque and then a step down. And this step down is when they would change the tool. So we're having a look at how we can, how we can correlate that with the quality of the part and the energy consumption before we do the tool change. So it's yeah, really interesting. So looking ahead, got to carry on with the sustainability and carry on with performance information. So we're going to get down to a more granular level of, of data capture and energy monitoring so we can start to look at things like kilowatt hours per part, um, look at our brazing gas, and look at also looking at our compressed air uses to make sure that's well optimized. And in terms of performance information, We've got a top 11 critical assets that we want to be able to see the health of any one time to see how that's working. And so I want a dashboard that shows whether they're working or not. We're focusing in on the paint plant still as well. So we want to be able to look at the right first time and increase it. We're in the really high 90s at the moment, but we, we can see using the data capture from the paint plant that we can understand the root cause of paint defects monitor that and get early warning signals to be able to pre prevent the cause of defects. Uh, we've standardized with Siemens PL PLCs, and now we've got one lot of Siemens PLC data going into the platform. We know it's going to be fairly simple just to be able to get the next lot of PLC data in there. We've just got to work out what problem it is we want to solve, not just shove all the data in there just because we can, but have a look at what the reliability information we need to improve the performance of that asset. And because the RS platform is nice and modular, it's fairly straightforward, um, it's going to be quite simple to do. So what, what have we learned? How to summarize that? So it, real solid hands-on manufacturing experience counts. It's not about data or shiny platforms. It's about finding the, finding the simple problem to solve to get started. And getting technical expertise from both parties is absolutely key. Like there's not one person that could have delivered this project. It relied on manufacturing engineering, automation engineering, reliability, everybody coming together. And with the support of a great IT team, we'll be able to deploy this rapid solution. And project management excellence. So just really looking at good practice project management, weekly meetings, weekly cadence, holding each other accountable for completing actions when we're going to say they're going to do them. And they don't need to be technical expert, experts. 
So don't expect to have to go to find that. So somebody who's used to doing digital transformation, that's not what you need. You just need people who've got good project management skills and who will be able to pull the expertise from the right people. So just to summarize it, what, the reason why I wanted to come here and just speak to people at this Manufacturing Expo is we came here about a year ago and we found a way to start. And I think there's lots of things going on in the environment and around us here that are kind of all singing, all dancing. They might get that bit of brain freeze, just think, actually, I don't know how to start. But just pick something simple, pick something real, something that's bothering you, and just get started. Expect it not to be right, expect it to fail, expect to learn from it, and just fail forward. Because if we don't start, other, pe other people will do it, they'll take your business, and we will not be a sustainable manufacturing companies. So thank you very much.